All right, that was kind of interesting. Uh, let's get this stuff out of the way. We'll do one more for now. Uh, this can be really addictive once you get into it. Like you'll just want to keep going and going and going and going. I'll mark these guys out. Okay. So the next exercise we'll have two arpeggios. Oh, weak, weak, weak. The first one. I don't know if you can see that. That's a six, which is E again. Oh, great. It's going to be like E minor and A minor or some ridiculous thing. Ooh, E major. Look out for that G sharp, kids. E major. And number two is a 10, if you can see that. 10 is A flat. And it's A flat minor. Ooh, look out. I'm scared already. All right, let's see what that one sounds like. All right, let's get this going. Um, this will be short today, thankfully, because they're doing construction again. And now, this time they're outside my window. So it's kind of creeping me out having these guys uh, able to see me at any moment. So luckily, this is only two arpeggios. It's E major and uh, A flat minor, or G sharp minor whatever you want to say, but those two chords actually go together. Like, for example, if it's uh, E and then the A flat. So those work together in the same scale. I mean, it's in that particular scale, it's a G sharp and not an A flat, but it's the same thing. So these two um, chords are actually very similar. The two arpeggios will be very similar. So for example, you could play an E major 7 arpeggio like this. And this is actually uh, an A flat, put it in quotes, A flat minor arpeggio with an E in the bass. So you got E and then A flat. So these two uh, go together very well, and if you're improvising with either of these, you can just switch in and out of them, however you might want to do. Uh, it's kind of a convenient way to do it, but... Um, but if you listen to the root... It's an E major 7 sound. Anyway, we have two arpeggios, E major, which we could do in this position. We'll mess around, we'll try and find something. The major shape that everybody knows, just E, G sharp, and B. Uh, how can we make this interesting? to go if we're here where can we go to hit the uh, the a flat or the G sharp minor whatever you want to call it you can just go down a half step so it could be it's right there so you don't really have to go anywhere if you want to hit the um, a flat minor coming out of the E major just go down a half step you're right there so But anyway, that kind of sounds nice. I think we can cycle this too, uh, so we can keep playing it over and over again. So let's see. Yeah, that works. That's <clears throat> just a nice little exercise of E major and A flat minor. Yeah, that's it. It's pretty simple. Um, I haven't done this before, but I'll give a rundown of the, uh, the frets here, just in case you can't see what's going on. Uh, so the 12th fret 
on the high E string, then the seventh fret, same string, then on the B string it's the ninth, on the G and the D it's nine, nine, and then same string, uh, the D, sixth fret, and then the E on the A string there. And then just go back up. So. And from here, you just go down in the A flat minor or G sharp minor, whatever you want to say. And this is very similar to what was there before, slight difference. Uh, the 11th fret E, 7th fret E, and 9th fret B string and then the 8th fret of the D string, or G, sorry, and then the 9th fret of the D, and then the 11th fret of the A, and then the, s I can't count, 6th fret of the A also, and then 7th fret low E. So. down to A flat, that would be cycling through to the root, but we're not going to do that. So just an easy little exercise. And you can practice these separately. Or you can just extend the whole exercise out if you want to. So that's it for today, just a simple little two arpeggio exercise. They're outside my window again. What the hell do you want from me?